If you have just been diagnosed with PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, you may be wondering how you even got here. I'm here today to share information around how it may have come about and what the four root causes of PCOS are so you have the right information that you need to move ahead and begin natural treatment for your PCOS. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm a clinical nutritionist with a special interest in PCOS. Each week, I'm bringing you simple, actionable nuggets of information about PCOS. By following Nourish Natural Health's PCOS Repair Protocol. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, let's dive in. First, let me tell you about what PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome is. The first thing to understand is that PCOS is a whole body disorder. It is not just limited to the reproductive system. The name polycystic ovarian syndrome is kind of misleading for this reason. It's not limited to the ovaries. Because of the hormonal dysfunction that follows PCOS, there are systemic effects. Symptoms can range from hair loss to facial hair growth, acne, as well as an ovulation cycles, irregular periods, weight gain, and infertility. In some cases, but not in all, it does also include cysts on the ovaries. You see, these cysts are actually baby eggs that never ovulated. And these baby eggs stayed as follicles. And this is where the name polycystic ovarian syndrome comes from, because the ovaries have multiple cysts, or baby eggs that end up producing high levels of androgens and can have hormonal dysfunction in the body. And this is why it's a systemic disorder, meaning it affects your whole body. Now, when these baby eggs don't actually maturate and they don't ovulate, that means that you can't complete the menstrual cycle. It can take a few times before you do actually ovulate. Then your period will follow two weeks later. This is why you may get irregular cycles as someone living with PCOS. Now, let's talk about PCOS and cysts. As I mentioned before, not every Everybody who lives with PCOS has cysts on their ovaries. The Rotterdam criteria is the diagnostic criteria used to diagnose PCOS. Polycystic ovaries is only one out of three criteria. To be diagnosed with PCOS, you must meet two out of three. The other two being an ovulation or oligoovulation, as well as excessive androgenic hormones. This means that if you reach the criteria of excess androgens, as well as irregular periods or oligoovulation, that you can be diagnosed with PCOS and not have the cysts on your ovaries. It's also important to note that many younger women have cysts on their ovaries. In fact, 70% of women under 21 have polycystic ovaries, but not necessarily PCOS. This is why an ultrasound is only 10% accurate. And this is why PCOS is a bit of a misleading name for the disorder. Better terms proposed have been metabolic reproductive disorder, as well as hyperandrogenic syndrome. Both of these are kind of catchy. So next question you may have is, is this a disease? So the simple answer is no, polycystic ovarian syndrome is a disorder. A disorder is a set of symptoms with no clear treatment and no real pathogenesis. Whereas a disease has an established diagnosis, pathogenesis, and treatment. We can put this into perspective with IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. One person may have gotten IBS from getting barley belly and then they contracted a parasite which changed their gut microbiome. Someone else may have IBS because they have a really high stress job where they have no relaxation and they're having coffee on an empty stomach and not eating all day. Both these hypothetical women have IBS but they both originated in different ways but they both have a similar set of symptoms. This is the same for PCOS, there are different kinds of root causes. And this is what makes it a disorder or a syndrome over a disease. Next, let's discuss how you may have gotten PCOS. There are many factors that can influence PCOS and its development. It can be a cluster of events or it can be one thing that's triggered. Genetic, endocrine and lifestyle factors all increase PCOS's risk. Family studies do suggest that there is a genetic link, whilst endocrine disruptors and stress hormones definitely play roles as well. There's also environmental factors to think about. Insulin resistance, inflammation, and stress all contribute to the development of PCOS. Sometimes the genetics are there, but they're not triggered. Then sometimes lifestyle factors can turn on the genes to increase your risk of PCOS. Things like poor sleep and poor sleep hygiene are a really commonly overlooked factor. This is because sleep has a huge impact on your insulin resistance. And with insulin resistance being one of the underlying causes of of PCOS. This makes sleep a huge factor in determining whether or not you're going to increase your chances of developing PCOS. 
There are many other lifestyle factors that may turn on and off your genes. So on that note, let's talk about the four root causes of your PCOS. The root cause of your PCOS is extremely important to find out, acknowledge and manage. This is because if you can treat the root cause, you can reduce the overall symptoms. PCOS has four root causes. Number one is insulin resistant PCOS. Number two is adrenal PCOS. Number three is inflammatory PCOS. And number four is post pill PCOS. Each of these root causes affects ovulation and androgen production differently. That's why it's important to tailor the treatment to the root cause of your PCOS. Addressing the root cause is essential for symptom reversal and personalized treatment plans. If you want to know what the root cause of your PCOS is, head to the Nourish Natural Health website. We have a quiz there that you can take and see what the root cause of your PCOS is. You can then head over to our shop and check out the different supplements that we have available to treat the root causes of your PCOS, plus our best-selling Androgen Blocker Plus supplement that will help you tackle pesty symptoms really quick. Next up, let's talk about if the pill can fix your PCOS. The birth control pill is commonly prescribed as a way to manage PCOS, but when it comes down to it, the pill is only masking symptoms. It's not actually treating the root cause and hence it's not fixing your PCOS at all. There is a misconception that the pill will regulate your cycles. When you're on the birth control pill, you're essentially not producing the hormones that you need to have a menstrual cycle. And instead you are having a withdrawal bleed. This happens when you take the sugar pills. So it's not actually a real period. So whilst it seems like it may be regulating your cycles, it's actually not doing that at all. By taking the pill, you will also reduce the androgen levels in the blood and thus it will stop your symptoms. But essentially, as soon as you go off the pill, your symptoms will reappear, sometimes worse. So then what happens if you don't treat the root cause? Ignoring the root cause of your PCOS will not only worsen the symptoms of your PCOS over time, but the hormonal imbalances could go on to affect you for the rest of your life into your menopausal years. Specifically, insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a key driver in type two diabetes, which is the most common type up to 80%. Having PCOS is associated with an increased risk of type two diabetes. Early intervention is is key so that you can reduce your risk of developing any chronic illness when you're older. When blood sugar levels are unstable and insulin is secreted, the cells can then become resistant to the insulin, which means it can't let glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cell. This means that you'll have unstable levels of insulin and glucose in the bloodstream, which goes on to have damaging effects like we talked about before, raising your chances of developing type two diabetes. Insulin resistance also increases your risk of miscarriage because of the influence it has on your reproductive hormones. It can also reduce your fertility by disrupting your menstrual cycle and causing anovulation, which means the sperm never gets a chance to fertilize. Symptoms include huge energy fluctuations throughout the day, cravings, brain fog, and stubborn weight gain. Next, let's talk about high stress in PCOS. So essentially you can have a maladaptive response to stress that causes your PCOS. Chronic stress leads to high amounts of cortisol and DHEA. HEA acts as an androgen and goes on to produce all those pesky symptoms like hair growth, acne, as well as hair loss in the male pattern. It also leads to immune system dysfunction, fatigue, mood swings, and again, energy fluctuations. Addressing stress as soon as you possibly can is key to reversing a lot of your symptoms. Lastly, we need to talk about inflammation and PCOS. Inflammation, specifically when it's systemic, is detrimental to the whole body, and it can even cause PCOS in some rare cases, things like endometriosis or irritable bowel syndrome. These things are really inflammatory and can go on to have a systemic inflammatory effect in the body. And chronic inflammation leads to autoimmune disorders as well as cardiovascular diseases. Identifying sources of inflammation or identifying gut health imbalances is really important to help manage your PCOS. As you can see, PCOS is a multifaceted disorder and it may need more multiple avenues of management. If this is a bit overwhelming for you, check out the Nourish Natural Health website for more guidance on how you can manage your PCOS. You can also take the quiz there to find out what the root cause of your PCOS is. And then you can check out our supplement bundles so that you can begin the management of the root cause of your PCOS. It's really important to remember
remember to take a holistic approach to PCOS. This includes diet, lifestyle, and supplements if needed. What signs or symptoms have I said in this video that have stopped and made you think, wow, that's me? Leave it in the comments because I really wanna know. That's all from me today, but I hope that I could share some information with you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when we come out with the next video. I'll see you there, bye.